We are literally in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, just a few hundred miles south of the equator, and our lookout spotted what we, we are pretty sure was the fin of a whale shark lolling on the surface. Still at 11 o'clock, about 300 meters. Point. Can't miss it. Can't miss it. It's right under the surface. You'll see it sooner or later. It's beautiful. Very quickly, the ship began to come about in a turn, reverse course, slow down. A Zodiac was prepared to put over the starboard side with our underseas team aboard, complete with a pole camera, a camera that we can put under the water, look up at these amazing creatures, see them in their environment, not just look down at them from the deck of our ship. This is an amazing trip because we get to go from Antarctic waters, very cold, very different creatures, all the way up into the tropics and then back into the temperate zone. Water temperature today is probably about 32 degrees, I'm guessing. And in order to combat that, to not be absolutely frozen by the time we're out of the water, we wear these dry suits, which keep us dry all the way from neck to feet. And underneath we've got probably the equivalent of five layers of long underwear. Well, the cold waters are definitely the favorite for Lisa and I. When I first came down to, to Antarctica, South Georgia, eight, nine years ago, I didn't think I'd see almost anything. And, and it's just tremendous. And it's got the giant kelp, just like we have in Monterey, but different stuff living on it, like that weird orange aggregated tunicate. Yep, here we go, changing over from our cold weather gear into our tropical gear. We finally arrived in the tropics, and it's pretty easy to tell that it's the tropics because there's a lot of people in the water. We don't get so many volunteers otherwise. And not only is it the tropics, but we're on isolated islands, and so it's, it's got the colorful fish. It has the butterfly fish, the, the hog fish, but not a big diversity. It's a, a lot of just a few individuals. Look at that fellow there. That's the hog fish just crushing up things. We have worms out looking for things. You don't see that so much in the colder waters. This one here, this fireworm's got these bristles all over it that protect it. So this is the hedgehog butterfly fish and it's uh, oh it's pretty secretive and I've never seen one before so I was quite excited and it's the land of moray eels certainly on Ascension Island we had more mores than I've ever remember seeing in my life and I've dove there before but they were everywhere and it is a completely different feel from Antarctica and with all of the fish instead of invertebrates. Bosenberg Island is separated from the mainland of Ascension by about 500 metres of ocean. And it's 500 metres that proved crucial to the survival of all of these birds because when people arrived on the mainland, brought cats with them, they wiped out most of the seabirds on the mainland. And so this is the last refuge for seabirds on Ascension, or at least most of the species that we're seeing here. I was on Ascension for 18 months employed as the conservation officer. That covered a whole range of activities from the seabird restoration program through turtle monitoring, anything that related to conservation of the natural history of Ascension. Ascension is one of the most important places for tropical seabirds in the Atlantic, one of the most important locations in the world for tropical seabirds. And one of my jobs was to find out just how many were here in 2001-2003. Tonight we've returned to Ascension after dark for the rare opportunity to see nesting green sea turtles. It's a short walk down to Long Beach where these animals come ashore to breed between January and June. They migrate from the coast of Brazil to Ascension to breed on the sandy beaches here the female digs a pit, lays 100 to 120 eggs, covers those eggs, returns to the sea. It's a beautiful and rare opportunity to see these wonderful animals. Hi, I'm Tab Tabloid here with the Oceanic Inquirer, and we're about to cross the equator. Ms. I, King Neptune, I'm here this afternoon with my lovely wife, Aphrodite. On 
such an epic journey, of course, covering thousands of miles at sea, we quickly fall into a daily routine of relaxation, of uh, getting up in the morning, of enjoying meals on deck, um, and we just fall into the rhythms of the ocean. In all of this vast ocean, of course, you never know when an encounter is going to come, what you might see at what time. One of my favorite things is to go up to the bridge deck and scan the horizon, seeing what, what possible animals you could bring up, if you could see any cetaceans. Of course, my love is whales and dolphins, always looking for and hoping to find in such a vast area a small pod of dolphins that would possibly be interested in the ship would come over and check us out. We were happily surprised to see rough-toothed dolphins. Uh, these animals came in and were vying for position in front of the boat, rolling on their sides, looking up at us as they were riding the pressure wave of the boat. And literally thousands of hours of dolphin watching in many places around the world. This is only the third time I've ever seen rough-toothed dolphins, so very exciting for me. Praia is the largest city in the Cape Verde Islands and quite a population jump from the other tiny towns along the Atlantic Ridge. Jumping from one British territory to the next along the ridge, Praia is quite a cultural jump and no better place demonstrates the West African roots as the local market. Today we're visiting the National Park on the island of Fogo. This is the lava that came out in 1951, and then in front of it, uh, the big crater produced lava in 1995 and caused the village, which is here on the caldera floor, to be evacuated. This little village is called Chadash Calderas. And these people came back and are forging a new life here in the right on the caldera floor. They grow uh, grapes and they have a little wine business. Really quite remarkable that they can produce such a wonderful product here in this very inhospitable environment, but they're very proud of their little village and what they're able to do here. very much. Um, it's strong and um, has full flavor. Recommended. So here we are, a day away from Las Palmas and the end of our voyage. The log at the moment is reading 7,400 nautical miles covered on this trip. We've got about 400 to go. And it's nice to have a couple of days to reflect on the things we've seen during this voyage. It's hard to imagine that just a few weeks ago we were sitting on a beach in South Georgia, surrounded by king penguins.